All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and create a test or actually a series of tests to ensure that our article model is working correctly and more specifically the slug field and the slugify instance utility all are working in tandem and working correctly. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and import our model. So from models or from dot models import article. And then we're gonna go ahead and declare our test case class, which is gonna be article test case. And of course it inherits the test case. Now remembering back to when we did tests before, we actually just do test underscore for the function and then some other data about it, right? So some other name that sort of describes what we're testing. And so what I'm gonna do, the very first test I'm gonna do is we're gonna define test underscore query set exists. Now I could totally test say test underscore article query set exists, but since this is the article test case, I don't need to be that explicit. So to test this, we would do query set equals to article dot objects dot all, and we'll do self dot assert true QS dot exists. That's it, okay? So really I'm just testing to make sure that there are article objects in the database. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. First off, I'm gonna do python manage.py test, and then I'm gonna write out articles. So this will only test the articles app. It won't test everything, which is what we're trying to focus on here. So I hit enter, and I get assertion error false is not true. So I actually have a failure in my test. Now before we go much further, the reason I'm doing this is because if we look at our test case here, this shouldn't fail, right? So if I run just general tests and hit enter, um, I should get one success and one failure. So I ran two tests, one failed. And it's the same one that just failed, but the other one did not. Okay, so why is it that this is working, but our query set test is not? Well, that actually has to do with the database made for the tests. So inside of our settings, we have this database here. Of course, I'm in the local environment, so I'm just using a SQLite database. But if you go into a production database, and use a production database, kind of like a Postgres SQL or MySQL, you need to make sure that that user has permission to create a database. Like this user right here would have to be able to create a database in order for me to actually use database entries. Tests themselves have their own quote unquote testing database. So that means that I actually have to do define setup and you have to write it just like that and what this function is gonna do, or this method is going to actually allow you to create entries into the test database. So you're actually not gonna be testing the pr production database or re really any main Django database. This, these are the things that you're not testing. You're testing a test database. So in here then I would have to do article.objects.create and let's say for instance, title is um, hello, world and content equals to something else. Okay, so now I actually should have an item in that test database. So if I test it again, now I actually see that it ran one test. Notice that it also is running the post save and pre-save methods on the create function here. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. Now, again, the reason it's running twice has to do with the fact that our pre-save, or our, excuse me, our post-save actually will call save again, so it does run it twice. And that's, you know, of course, one of those downsides of running that over and over and over again. But in any case, we now have this, you know, test query set exists, that does work. So this is actually not the greatest test, if you will. Uh, it's a really basic one, just testing if the database is in there. Another really basic one that's not really testing much, but it's gonna be testing maybe the count of items in here, right? So we can now say the count, and this time I'll go ahead and do assert equal, and the count in this case should be one, right? So again, I'm manually writing this because I'm actually setting up that data here. And so if I run this again, it's gonna give me two tests being true, which is pretty nice. Okay, but now what I wanna do is actually test the articles themselves. So. Um, like the actual slugs themselves. So what I'm gonna do is say for i in range, and I'll do zero to five. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test out a bunch of different items. So I'm gonna tab this in here and save it. So that means that it's gonna loop through several times and actually create some new test data for me. 
So if I run this again, I should at least get one error, right? So five is not equal to one, right? So this actually creates five items. And in which case this needs to be five now, okay? So what I can do here then also in this setup case is I can say self dot number of articles being something like five. And then we can actually use that in a couple places. This range function here or this uh, range method. And then also down here, this just makes it a little bit more resilient to if I want to change what that number would end up being. And then my tests, the actual test methods themselves don't have to hard code very much. Just really the setup method is doing a lot of that work. Okay, so now we should have five items with roughly the exact same slug. So now what I wanna do is define a test hello world slug. Okay, so what we should get here is we should grab our article objects. So I can actually come in here and say article objects dot all dot first, and then actually look at what that slug is. So this is not a query set anymore. This is now an object. Doing dot first is similar to like grabbing the zeroth index on a list. You can also do dot last as well, which would give you the, the last item in there. Okay. So there is one other aspect that I didn't mention in the query sets themselves, but we can actually do order by and pass in an ordering. In this case, I'll order it by the ID. That way it's going one, two, three, four, and so on. So the very first one should be the actual hello world title. The slug should be equal to hello dash world, or at least that's my hope. Okay. So now here I'm going to go ahead and do self dot assert equal again, this slug and hello dash world. Okay. So um, yet again, this is, you know, sort of a challenge of like, well, do I actually want to hard code this? Well, the answer, of course, is no. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to grab the actual slugify method itself. So this right here. And let's bring this back into the test. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and give the title being to obj.title. And this now, of course, is going to be slugified title. And we use that method of slugify for this title. And so this case, I actually want it to be true. Okay. So again, when we're writing tests, we want to write manual things very little. Okay. So the reason I'm doing this though, is to test the very first instance of what I just created, that it is equal to just simply the slugify title, right? Because of how that utility method works because of this, right? So the very first one should just be going off of that right there. Okay. So we save that and let's go ahead and give it a shot. We run it. Sure enough, it works. Now, if I actually put this in the wrong order, like if I did negative order, this actually flips the order. And what we'll get is an actual error. It's going to fail here. It shows me that this is not equal to that. So that actually is a whole nother test that we could do. So in this case now, what I want to do is run a another version of this test. And this time I'm going to go ahead and exclude. So we'll go ahead and say QS equals to article.objects.filter or rather exclude and slug being I exact being hello dash world. Okay. So this is now a query set in here. And what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and tab this in here and say for obj in qs let's go ahead and bring this title back that now we're going to say assert not equal essentially saying that these are not the same those shouldn't be the same uh, and that's just a way to test that everything that isn't exactly hello dash world um, then it's going to go ahead and test all of those okay so we save that and let's run this again and now it ran only three tests here. So let's make sure that I rename this, this test and this test. So now we're gonna say test hello world, not, or, or let's say unique slug. Okay, and we run this again, and sure enough, it runs four tests, okay? Um, and so 
it is running all of these. So if, of course, if I actually said assert equal and I ran that again, uh, that it's still giving me a failure. So it's actually running through each one of these. But as soon as there's a failure, it's going to it's going to fail out. Right. So that's assuming that if there is a failure, then it's going to raise that error on when that failure happens. And in this case, um, it doesn't happen if we do it correctly. So assert not equal. OK, great. So that is a few different tests on all of this.